G'day and welcome back to RC Model Reviews and the rebuild of the original Blackout Mini H Racing Quad. Yes, and this is the thing, this is the machine that sort of started the whole mini quad drone racing type thing, the freestyle and racing set up with, the, with small quadcopters. Uh, and this is the one that was sent to me by Blackout the Drunk many years ago now. I don't know, was it 2015 or something? It's a long time ago. And I flew it for a long time. But of course things have changed. Technology's moved on, designs have moved on, so I thought it would be a great idea to restore this, as I said in my previous video. So what I've done here is I have fitted this frame out with all the latest in terms of modern technology. So I'm going to take you a bit of a walk around now, just show you what I've actually added or put in this quad. Now, we've got motors here. I've got DYS motors. These are the, let me read them out for you, it is the Sun Fun motor. This is a 2207 2400 kV motor. And it's running three-bladed props. I think these are, I don't know, I'll have to look. Are they Dell props? They are Dell props, running Dell props. And we've got the, um, the DYS 40 amp 32-bit ESCs. Hopefully this, the lighting isn't too crappy here. Uh, yeah, 40 amp 32-bit ESCs. These are working really well. I'm, I'm very impressed with those ESCs. Now, of course, the, the big trend these days is to use a 4-in-1, where all the, the ESCs are put into the stack. But this, I've restored it to the original configuration, which is having four ESCs on the arm. So I was so pleased that DY sent me these ESCs. Up front, we've got a run cam camera. Now, these originally had a board camera. Yes, it was a, a board camera, which was set vertically, or set so it was pointing straight out the front. So you couldn't really fly very fast because all you would see is ground. And although we played around with spaces to angle the board back a bit, it really wasn't suitable for high-speed use. But... With the little run cam micro, well, hey, that's fantastic because now I can just angle that wherever I like and it's much smaller, much lighter. And the picture you get from these things is brilliant. So I'm very impressed with this camera. It's working extremely well. Excellent job by run cam. Inside here, we have the FreeSky integrated 2.4 gig receiver and F4 flight controller with OSD. That also is working extremely well. I had to upgrade the Betaflight software to the latest version so I could use the pass-through to configure two of the ESCs to run backwards. That was a pretty straightforward job. You know, these days upgrading firmware is really easy. Um, video transmitter. Inside here I've got a Foxia TM200, I think it is, which is a 200 milliwatt uh, FPV racing transmitter. It produces a really solid signal. Now, I have already flown this, and one thing I've noticed is there is noise. There is noise from the ESCs getting into the video feed. Now, is it getting through the camera or is it getting through the video transmitter? I have a feeling it's probably getting through the video transmitter. But one thing that I will be aware of is where I have connected the camera to the OSD, I've just run the signal leads. I haven't put an earth lead in there. So we could have a ground loop as well. If you don't know what that means, don't worry. I'm going to explain this in a future video because this has turned out to be a perfect example of a quad with noise on video. So I'm going to show you how it flies right now, I'm going to show you what it looks like now, but I'm also going to do a follow-up video in which I will track down the source of the noise and I'll show you how to eliminate it so you get perfectly clean video. Because as we move up to more powerful motors, more powerful ESCs, we're going to find that you get a lot more noise on your battery feed and that can produce some rather nasty effects on the live video stream. In fact, I've seen a few commercial out-of-the-box quads which have appalling video. As soon as you punch the stick, the video gets lines all over it. So we'll show you how to get rid of those. Um, that's going to be an upcoming video. Right, so I've run a, a lead on here from the video transmitter to the video mounting here. So it's all nice, compact, nicely set up. It's not my best build ever because my hands have been a bit shaky this week. But And fine soldering was a bit of an issue, but I managed to get it all together. I'm using the original Blackout PDB. You can tell that because if you look down in there, you can probably see the words blackout written on it. It's the original blackout PDB, and it wasn't designed for the kind of currents that these things are going to be drawing. So that could be a bit of an issue, and it may, may also account for some of the noise on the video feed. But we'll work around that. I'll show you how to circumvent that. Now, one other thing on here which is kind of cute is this, the Mobius platform. Um, back in the day, when we first started flying these things, we used Mobius cameras and we stuck them on this platform with a little rubber mounting thing so that any vibration was, in theory, isolated from the camera. It didn't work that well because the cameras themselves are fairly light. So these did still transfer vibration. But the problem, or the good thing, is that with small, fast-spinning props, you don't get a lot of vibration unless you've really got an out-of-balance prop or a bent motor shaft. So 
what we do these days, of course, we just mount the camera directly on the frame. And so what I would do if I was going to use this a lot was I would take this Mobius platform off and I would put a Runcam 3S or whatever mount so I could just have my camera sitting right up here on the front, mounted firmly to the frame. But for the time being, I'm going to do something different, which I'll show you in a minute. And the other thing we've got here is the traditional antenna mounts. So I've just used cable ties here with heat shrink and the, and the receiver antennas under there. So this is kind of retro too. You know, you don't see that much of this anymore. On the back, I've got a B-Rotor antenna. Well, I think it's a Pagoda type, I'm not sure, but it seems to work reasonably well. I get a solid RF link um, between the quad and my goggles. So that's all working pretty well. This is an addition, which I did on the original one, because these things, there was no, battery mounting was an afterthought. It really was an afterthought, you know, and we had all problems with cable management because you have this out the back here and sometimes the wires would fall into the props and things. So I have uh, sort of worked around that a little bit, but it's still pretty much original. This is the original XT60 I had right from the first time I built this thing on the original wiring. So haven't changed that, but I'll show you later how I've managed to work around that. Um, yep, yeah, uh, so as I say, battery positioning was kind of, you know, pretty how you going. So I've put some uh, closed cell foam rubber on here so that the battery isn't resting on the screw tops. You see we've got screw tops for these pillars here. We didn't want the battery resting on those because on a hard landing they'll make a dent in your battery and you could end up with a fire situation which is not a good thing to have. And speaking of pillars, you'll notice that I've got metal pillars front and back but I've left the original nylon pillars in the middle as kind of a, uh, a legacy thing. I've switched to metal pillars because well this is going to have a lot more load on it because it's got more powerful motors, it's got um, a bigger battery, I'm going to run four cells on here of course, we didn't run four cells back in the day, it was three cells, you had a three cell 1300 or 1500 milliamp battery and that was it, four cells, whoa that was like no one had even thought of that at that stage. So this is going to have a four cell high C battery to give us the power we need to run these ESCs and those motors and that's pretty much it, that's the tour of my retro rocket, my rebuilt blackout mini quads. I think what we should do now is I'll go out and I'll get some footage for you. Now having said that remember there is a noise issue on the live video feed and it's even so bad it's affecting the OSD on the F4 flight controller but that's a future video we'll work around that we'll fix it up in the meantime I'm just going to show you what this little thing will do with new gear on it. But just before we do that I'm going to show you my battery solution how I've got around the battery issues. I'm using a Tatu 1300 and it is a, how many C's is it? 75C Tatu 1300 pack. And the way I'm going to set this up is I'm going to put the battery on there. I'm going to split the battery leads around the antenna so that will make sure they don't fall into the prop. And I'm going to use a Runcam 2 with this TPU printed mount. And I can put that on top of the battery pack like this. It makes a pretty tall stack, but when you're flying highly tilted, the height doesn't matter. And then a battery strap will go around the whole damn thing so I'll be able to get some HD footage from this quad using the Runcam 2. I'm not going to use a Mobius. In fact, no, I might put the Mobius on there and just show you what it would look like if you did film it on a Mobius, and I think you'll be shocked and horrified. But there we go. Now that I've shown you that, I will charge the battery, and we will go. It's a very windy day today. It's a very crappy flying condition, so it's going to be a good test. We'll go out. We'll give this a bit of a blat up and down. See what you think of it.
So that's it. That's the Retro Rocket. That's the rebuilt Blackout Mini Quad with modern electronics, modern motors, modern ESCs, modern flight controller. And to be honest, it flies just like a modern quad. Perhaps it's not as punchy because it is fairly heavy. It is 400 grams without battery or, uh, or anything else. As you see it there, that's 400 grams on these scales that don't show the blood. So it's a fairly porky little beast. And so you do miss out on those really violent punch outs. But honestly, it is still a blast to fly. It's, it shows you that these days, uh, the frame is probably the least important part of the mini quads we're racing. From a perspective of frame design, you just want something that's strong, that's going to withstand the crashes. And I've got to say, having flown this, having rebuilt this, this feels awfully frail. It really does that tiny, very thin top plate. It's got a very thin bottom plate as well. That plate's very thin. The PDB is, is contributing significantly to the strength, but that's only fiberglass. And these thin little arms here, you can see how thin they are. I really wouldn't want to crash it and do anything substantial because I think you'd be left with just a little shredded ball of carbon fiber. Speaking of which, be very careful with carbon fiber. I've got some in my hand and it really hurts and it's hard to get out. Um, I'll have to get stuck in there with the Dremel or the, I don't know, angle grinder and get that out later, but it's really sore. Never mind. That's it. Now, comments, questions to the usual place, please. And if you want to see anything specific with this little machine, if you want to see me do something stupid, then by all means suggest it to me and I will give it due consideration. In the meantime, as I say, watch out follow-up video coming with the uh, dealing with that noise issue, as you saw in the live video, got some really bad banding and it's actually even affecting the synchronization of the OSD on the flight controller. I'll show you how to deal with that. We'll throw it on the scope, we'll find out where the noise is coming from, we'll find out where we can filter it out and I'll show you how to build yourself a little filter. I've done that before, but I'll show you a new one which should be even more effective for this kind of installation. There you go. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.